All right. Good evening and welcome to the Scotty Rock Show. I have one of my dearest, dearest, dearest friends in the world, Miss, Miss Sandy, with us tonight. Hi, Sandy. Thanks for coming on the show. Hi, babe. How are you? I'm awesome. Thank you. Hey, Danny. Welcome to the show. Welcome everybody else who's watching this evening. Um, Sandy's, um, like I said, a dear friend and psychic medium. She runs the Psychics Unite group out of Portage and Westfield. So very happy to have them. We had our meeting yesterday. We'll be talking about that tonight. Good, good meeting um, and good food. So, oh, Barbara's here. Hi, hi, Barbara. Barbara says hi, Sandy. Hi, Barb. So, hi. So tonight, tonight is uh, we're going to reiterate as we go. Sandy and I will be more than happy to have a Q and A session with everybody about spiritual stuff. So feel free to ask your questions tonight um, and put them in the in the Facebook page or whatever, and we'll be able to see them. Then we'll answer them for you tonight, too. So very excited. Sandy, welcome to the show. Scotty, thank you for having me, my dear. How are you? Besides, I asked that already, but besides I, I'm, that, I got I got a little bit of a headache, but other than that, I'm great because yep, you, you're here. Yep, I agree. Send you some love and healing. Yeah. You know, it, it just happens after a day or a couple of days of readings. You know, you kind of get the headache. But, yeah, we had a great time at Psychics Tonight. Hi, everybody from Psychics Tonight. In Westfield and Portage, one group in a couple towns. Um, really amazing people there. We we go to, I can never say the name of the restaurant. What's the name of the restaurant? La Tolteca. La Tolteca. Mm -hmm. I say it right? Yep, you got it. La Tolteca. Like, but anyway, they love the Ectomobile. <laughs> yes, they did. A lot. Of, well, when we went outside, everybody was beeping. It was good. Yeah, it was fired up. So, so yeah, it was kind of neat. We talked to the owner. Of uh, was, was he the owner? No, I think he's just the manager, but he's a really nice guy. He's a great guy and 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 a great restaurant. So if you ever get to Portage, Wisconsin, go to you say it. La Tolteca. Yeah. Oh, cat's on. Hi, cat. Hi, Diana. Hi, cat. Man, they have amazing, amazing, amazing Mexican food there. It's really wonderful. It is, and they're good. They're accommodating to fit us in. And yeah, that's the cool thing. They gave us they gave us their whole back room. For Psychics Unite, so we can sit there and meet, and it's a lot quieter, so we can hear each other, and we can have discussions. So, very, very, very great place. So, and like I said, what he said that if we needed to do, if we wanted to do like anything with the TV, we could, we could do use the TV, we could use the radio, whatever we needed, we could do. Right, and then we told him that anytime he wants to come back and sit us and talk about ghosts, we'll be more than happy to. He was bringing he and I'll let you talk about this, but this was kind of cool. He was bringing up um, how much spirits are, are revered in Mexico compared to they are in the United States. Yep. Well, they have the um, the Day of the Dead, and that you know they that's their day to you know thank and remember their the, their dead. They actually are more into remembering their loved ones passed on than a lot of people. You know, they'll have candles and pictures and they do offerings and yeah, it's it's really neat. A lot of people don't know that. And, and what's what's neat about it, you know, is the fact that down there that it's not just one day. They always have it all the time. They respect their people that have passed because they know that they're still with them. And we want to make sure that, that, that and we have to get that here in the United States. We have to get that more and more. And I think the Ectomobile is going to help with that. <laughs> I think it's going to help with a lot of things. I think it'll open a lot of doors, Scotty. I actually, I actually had somebody today ask me if I do parades. I said I haven't yet, but if you have one, I'm in. <laughs> That's cool. Yeah, I mean, I could totally see it. You know, I mean, I, I think you did a great job on it, Andy and Andy and Kelly did a great job on your stickers. I, it, you came together beautifully. Yeah, it's really cool. But by the way, anybody watching the show today, we're going to mention this a few times. But Ecto-22 has its own Facebook page, at Ecto-22. So go ahead and hit that up. Um, what's going to be kind of fun is 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 we're going to have contests with it as we go throughout the year. It is like, where in the hell is is Ecto-22? You know, if we see us in the town. We're, but we're hoping that other people will find it, too, as we move forward, is that they'll search Facebook for Ecto-22. Maybe i got to get a sticker. i got to have Andy print some stickers on it on Facebook stickers to put it on the car that we're at Facebook too, you know? Yeah, definitely. And then, you know, we could do that. Uh, remind them to, if you see Ecto 22, put a picture up, 
tag yep. us in the picture, you know, and and, w and once you do, maybe you know, the one that will go driving and get a discount off a of reading or something for for yep. to be there, you know, something or fun. Even make a few T-shirts or something, and yep. you get a free T-shirt if you know we draw your name for the month, you know. Right. I want the Ecto Twenty Two Cannon though, where I can shoot at T-shirts at people. Yeah. <laughs> Water cannon, that'd be cool at a parade. Shoot candy out of it or something. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I mean, they could sit with the side doors open with the backpacks throwing candy. We could do that though. You know, they make potato guns, we just can't use them at such high velocity. Dang it, we could do that. Can you imagine getting can you, can you get can you get hit in the head by a, by a piece of candy? <laughs> We'd, we'd have to shoot out like Twinkies or something fun. Marshmallows. Yeah. They, I, I just saw it today. Andy said that the cereal's out finally around here. I've got to go to the store and, and buy some boxes. What cereal? They have Ghostbusters cereal? Yeah, for the new movie. Ghostbusters Afterlife cere uh, cereal has um, the Stay Puff Marshmallow Man in it. Oh, yeah. We need that. We need to get that, don't we? Yeah, we do. So, Greg says, how is my alien doing? He is good, and he is sitting in your basket. You want to know what he's talking about? Yeah, please tell us, because everybody at home doesn't know what the hell he's talking about either. So I, you know, I sell crystals. Oh, yeah. let me get it into the camera there here. Is. This isn't the one that Greg got, but I have alien skull crystals. Nice. Cool. Some of them have different eyes. This is a clear uh, rose quartz with uh, tiger's eye eyes. And then these are the only two I have left. I sold a whole bunch of them. Red Jasper with Labradorite eyes. Well, that one's creepy. He's cool, I thought. That My was son a wanted one. this one. My son wanted this one, but then he ended up taking a blue one. So, yeah. That's what he's talking about. He's great, got one. A couple people bought him. But that's that's the crystals, you know? Yeah. They, they call themselves. They call you to them. Yes, they do. That's for sure. That's wonderful. So why don't we go ahead? I know we always get into talking before we even do the intros. So go ahead and give everybody an intro. I think a lot of people know you, but let's just let's just make sure there are those few that have tuned in that don't know Sandy know who Sandy is tonight. So who's Sandy? God, that's such a loaded question. <laughs> yeah, it is. <laughs> it depends on what I want to answer that day. No, I'm definitely the person that you. I mean, on here I I watch what I say, but I'm definitely the person you don't put on speakerphone. Um, but I'm a psychic medium. Um, I've read tarot cards and oracle cards for many, many years. Um, I started doing that about the age of 16. Um, I've been a medium since I couldn't even tell you. I've been talking to spirits. The first time was three years old that I remember. It's cool because my mom remembers that day too, which is really neat, you know. And um, I just got certified from Dawn from Magic Hands Reiki for Reiki. So I am doing my own little spin on Reiki using crystals, and I'll be doing that in Chicago um, at the Exotic Affair in July. And I might do it right. in June at the one for Dawn in Stevens Point. So, yeah, I'll be at that show. Yes, it's, you will. Uh, Dawn's doing the LGBTQ show for the LGBTQ community up at Stevens Point area. You know, it's a, it's a very under under serviced community and i think it's time for us to start getting into the communities that uh, that and that's everybody getting into them too you know it was really fun that then i was up in minneapolis and i actually got a couple of readings with we had some we had more african americans than i thought at most shows you know so i was glad that they were there too trying to you know get in touch with us so there's a lot of communities that could use spiritual help and we need to get into those communities and and help doing shows for that. So, well, it'll be nice. Did you just hear the pop? Didn't hear no pop. I did. It was like a slide of shoot. There. What did you do? I don't know what the heck it is. Is anybody else hearing that at home? I didn't hear that. It sounds like a drop in the water. Uh oh. <laughs> a drop of water. That's not. Is it raining? I have no water in the house. I mean, the house is dropping here and it's not raining, so it's not my roof. That's what I was thinking, but I know a roofer. No. <laughs> or if, it, or if it was me taking a leak, I just checked that too. I, <laughs> I'm dry. I'm yeah, dry. I, um, 
I think it's cool that they're that the, that's uh, Donna's doing this show. Um, it was neat because I've seen a lot of LGBTQ community at Pagan Fair when I did Pagan Fair a couple of years ago. So I told right. her to reach out to them too because you might uh, it might just bring more people to point to the point area. Um, right. I'm excited to support the community because to me, I don't. It doesn't matter who you are. You need help. I'm here. Right. I mean, and that's the big thing with Psychics Unite, too. That's why we did it, because we're here to unite everybody. We're not here to divide. It's all about everybody being one. I mean, that's what we are in this universe. We're all of love, and when we cross over, we are of love. And so why aren't we of love now? Why are we saying my community is better than yours, my church is better than yours? Let's just be one and just love each other. Exactly. I, I, I totally agree with you. And it's it's just there's too much diverse. Well, I don't want to say diversity, but there's too much labeling to where people yes. can be like, I don't want to be this or I don't want to be around this person because of this. As long as you're doing good and, and, and you're caring for your other one, it doesn't matter. It's none of my right. business what your choice is. You be you and love who you are. Right. Exactly. You know, we've done that. We've done that with politics this last year we've done that you know if you believe one way you can't be my friend since when has that happened we've never had that as a as a country you know ever you know and, and it's been so weird that that we're getting even worse and worse instead of trying to get more and more of love you know i thought it was turning and then we saw this election cycle and now we're fighting people just because they don't get covid shots i mean what the heck is going on you know exactly. if you want to get it if you don't more power to you but you know just know the chances you know what i mean that's the one thing about america if we make our own choices so if we we're other countries it would be different but if we're in america we make our own choices but don't come back at anyone and say well now we'll see what happened blah 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 because i got covid no you chose it if you don't want to get it you chose you know what i mean that's the other thing that i think is huge right now that we have to do is our own personal responsibilities for the actions that we make because i think that's a big thing oh yes you know we have free will and that is our free will to do what we're going to do um it shouldn't matter it's nobody's business we should all be able to agree to disagree i don't see why it's so hard i don't either i mean because i love everybody just for themselves and it doesn't what the heck is going on it's sounds like a, it sounds like there's a fish jumping in a pond. Are you? Are you a game going? No, I don't have anything on my Facebook page. I always keep it quiet. Or I mean, my laptop page. I have crap on my phone, but my phone's not making any noise. I know. I turned Ooh. my phone down. You hear it? it went, I'm like, what the heck is going on? Scott All right, is playing so, a fishing game. He just doesn't want us to know. He's he's. he's no, Greg. Him. Greg plays. Greg plays no. it. Greg's a fisherman. Yep. Well, yeah, I agree too. Diana puts on here. Oh, good. Kimberly heard it, so it's not only me. Woo! I don't know what it is. Right, exactly. I see what Diana Henry is saying, and that is true. Um, but I'm excited. Yeah. But I'm excited on it, Diana. Though you know, is the fact that that since the trials, which you know Terry does, Terry does clinical trials. And um, since the trials, I, and, but she didn't do this one. But since the trials, the amount of the amount of, of effectiveness has gone way up. I mean, it's it's up like three or four percentage more than what they thought at the trials. So, but yes, it doesn't it doesn't. Um, but it stops you from having the severe reactions that people died from. That's what the big thing of the of the shot does. All right, I'm going to go through my page because I don't know what the heck's going on. So everybody still sees me, right? You yep. still keep talking. I'll let you talk about something. We don't bother here. Okay, everybody else tonight, tonight, if you're on with with us, please know we're here to answer questions tonight. And um, we're going to do a Q&A. So if you have it here, please. What the heck? My Q&A. Scotty, where do you get all your Ghostbusters clothes? That's a that's a good thing. Everywhere. I mean, I search every. Did you ever hear of the site called Mercari? Yes. I've done Mercari. I've done um, Amazon. 
eBay. Um, I, I even do Wish. I mean, I've yeah. seen you belt buckles, t-shirts. Yeah. Well, belt buckles I got as a gift. Jeez. My 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 new belt buckle I got of the Ghostbuster guy I got from Paul and um, and Sonia Bradford. So from from Ghost Hunters fame. So they sent me one as a re for my birthday, and one of the other friends sent me a Star Trek one, but I don't wear that too often. But I mean, I can. I have my I have my Captain Kirk thing and my belt buckle. So I think I'm a little bit of a cosplayer myself, aren't I? <laughs> uh, I don't know. I um, I, I think I think so. I think so. I think we need to get you in a Slimer outfit. Actually, actually, I have one. Do you really? Yeah, it's in right over here. So what I'm going to do it in, in the Ecto 22. Is I'm going to actually put Slimer's head. Let me grab it here. Let me grab it here if I can get it. Talk to amongst yourself while I get this. Talk to amongst ourselves. I'm looking, watching for questions. Yeah. I've seen a long ponytail there, Mr. Scotty. I know. Does it look good? It does. It does. It does. Uh oh, I see Slimer coming. There it is. So Kristen Erickson, who I'm, I'm channeling the book with, her son, Sean. Gave this, and she found this somewhere, Goodwill or something. And um, so, what I'm going to do with what I'm going to do with Slimer is I'm going to put him over the headrest on my seat, and then I'm driving down the highway. So as I'm driving, everyone thinks Slimer's sitting with me. <laughs> yep, heck yeah! Put a make him more full. Put a blanket on in him or something. Make yeah. him full. Heck yeah! There you go, That'd Slimer. Cool. I want to see Slimer in there next month. You'll see him very quickly. Cool. So yeah, no, I um, I don't know. I'm excited to do the show. We're going to Ashland in June. Yes, we are. It's gonna be fun. I can't well, wait. Some clearing, being right on the water. The hotel is literally right on Superior. Yeah, I'm on actually staying at um, I'm staying at a friend's sister's house. Okay. And I'm gonna be right up there, and she's there. Um, and we're trying not to tell her because. Um, Ecto is going to come screaming into her house and she'll be freaked out beyond compare. By then, I mean, I have the siren now, so I have the siren. So um, by then, we'll be able to. Um, what the heck is going on? Where's this coming from? It's still doing it? I think so. I'm just going to. I'm just going to. I'm not going to say another word. I'm just going to put it up to um, ghosts. Yes. Spirit cleansing you with water. That's the only thing I could think of. But no, I am. I'm excited. I get to go rock hunting. I want to find some muprites and some agates. And yeah, I'm excited. Yeah. Yeah. Unfortunately, tonight, Sandy and I aren't doing readings. But if you want to know how we do readings and that type of thing, that's the type of questions we, you know, we're willing to answer tonight. Or, Did or ask you what we were doing? What? Someone asked if we were doing readings? Yeah, or so can I ask about my sister? Like, what kind of questions? Kimberly asked. Okay. But Kimberly, yeah, we're not doing a read unless I can't. My head hurts too much. But if Sandy wants to do one here, or there, it's up to her. I mean, if, if they want to I, ask um, a question, they can. I got I got asked a question in my t uh, messages today, so no and no to that answer. There you go. No and no. <laughs> Yeah, you, that's your reading. If you want more to that reading, you have to then schedule a time with Sandy. Yes. And she'll be happy to explain why no one know, but she'll just talk about no one know. No one know, but the person will know. Or maybe if they're watching, they'll know. No and no. That's funny. <laughs> it's the answer, unfortunately. Oh, yeah. Hey, Nick's here. Hi, Nick. Welcome. Thanks for coming. The head of Shadowhunters Paranormal Investigations and Events. Hi, Nick. Nick, Nick, Nick. Nick is going back to Six Flags this year. I'm working there already, so excited for him to watch his shows and videos about Six Flags. Shadowhunters is the only team to ever and will only ever investigate at Six Flags Great America in Gurney, Illinois. So very cool for our team to be there. I wasn't a member of the team yet because Nick didn't like me then, and now he loves me. That was really cool. The first time I met Sharon 
was at a Psychics Unite meeting. And since I was a kid, I grew up in Chicago. So we went to Great America all the time. And by the demon and by the eagle, I always seen spirits. There's a girl. And I'm like, and when Sharon came in and said that they had investigated and they, they found the spirits there, it was like, thank you. You know, it just another validation. I, I worked there at Six Flags. That's what you said on the eagle. Yep, on the eagle. I, I worked there. with I worked with a, a gentleman in the paranormal who lives in Savannah now. His name is Patrick Burns. And Patrick Burns and I worked on the Eagle together. And I would always call him because he kind of looked like Egon Spangler from Ghostbusters. So I, I always told I always go, Hey Patrick, say it, say it. He goes, I collect spores, molds, and fungus. I used to laugh my ass off on the we used to do it over the speaker phones, you know, or the ride ride phone. Yeah. And so we used to have a great time. But but Patrick was like on one of the first he was like one of the pioneers to um, paranormal television. And oh. so he came on the television. He was on Haunting Evidence was his show. That's cool. Yeah, it was on True TV. It was like one of the first ones out there. It was before Ghost Hunters, it was before everybody. So he was he's been in the field for a long time. And it was funny when we met that night, he, he said, I remember as a kid, there's a, there was a guy that always told me that ghosts aren't scary. And he goes, that's how I got into the paranormal. And that night he realized that I was the one that told him that ghosts aren't scary. Because yep. they're not. Everybody thinks they are. They're not. Not unless you have, like, you know, something going on, a poltergeist who's being a stinker or something like that. But, you know, cool. ghosts aren't really scary. Should be coming from love. Right, right. Well, uh, you know, that's the difference. Let's talk about that, too, because we keep talking about the difference. So what is the difference between ghosts and spirits and the biggest thing in the world? Well, I'm trying to define this because people get all mixed up on this. And then they go, oh, spirits are, are bad and spirits aren't bad. So a spirit is a person or a soul that has died and that is just a soul now, no, no fleshies, nothing, nothing to live in. Um, just a soul that's gone all the way to the other side. And and I use the other side as if you want to use heaven, you want to use um, Summerland, whatever you want to call it in your religion. We're not going to get into religion tonight. But whatever you want to call it, it's the other side. So when you cross all the way over, and then on the other side, you become of love. So we had that question yesterday at, at our meeting, too. And then yeah. ghosts are the ones that die but don't cross over. So they're stuck here on earth. So they're still, of the, they're still of this earth energy, which is this devious, this, this always want to be better than everybody else. Kind of like what we we're talking about at the beginning of the show. And when, and, and that's terrible to think a ghost could be of love for the rest of their lives. If they just crossed over, you know, but too, too many ghosts think that they're going to get judged. And that's where religion comes in to judge them. You know, everybody has to do some, I call it life review. You know, some religions call it purgatory, but it's not forever. It's not a long time. It's you have to like atone for what you did. You find, you know, it's not only what you did to one person, it's how you did it to the whole family. So if you did something to one person, it could be the whole family that has it too. Well, so, and I, call, I call it making amends. It's making yeah. amends for what, and it doesn't always have to be something that you did wrong on this side, just something that wasn't done exactly the way it should have been right you know and and i call you know like you called it uh you know it's called so akashic records it's going through your records or it's also been called you know when you your life real right mm -hmm. yeah i call it life review life real same records everything it's all the same because we have to go over and we have to atone for the stuff we did good bad ugly you know it's just what it is yep but but that's where, and then the question came to me yesterday at Psychic Tonight um, Portage, you know, Sandy's group. We ended up talking about it, and they go, how do you know the difference? I said, it's, it's really kind of simple. Because if you feel unconditional love coming from that soul you're talking to, then they've crossed over. Mm -hmm. If there's anything that seems weird, um, a little bit off, or it does, just doesn't seem right, then it's a ghost. And because we're talking ghosts. about the different ghosts too. Right. Go ahead. That's we talked about. You could have a ghost that's just a residual haunting, means Correct. that it's stuck. It's like in a loop and it's stuck. Or you can have someone that is just there and is 
has to make their things right that they're working on. Yep. And sometimes you have them there for protection because there's something you're going through and they need to help you through it. So we do have different ones for there for different reasons. Yeah. Good, bad, or otherwise. Right, exactly. And, and, and that's the neat thing. Once we understand what these souls are and that they're here to help us, that's the best thing to have. You know what I mean? It's nice when you can realize who they are, too. Yeah, that's even better. And that's what I like. I mean, but still, that's why, I mean, the ghost, the ectomobile, I still deal with ghosts. You know, Sandy and I still deal with ghosts because we do go to people's homes to help. And in most cases there, it's either, you know, of course, it's either a spirit or a ghost. Um, but but most of the time, it's spirits. But people watch too much TV. Yeah. Too many movies that scares them. Yes, exactly. And, and people are scared of the unknown. It really yeah. is unknown. They can't see it, touch it. They might not hear it, but they know it's there. Right. So. Which we can, we, uh, the fortunate thing for us to, we can do all that. <laughs> yes, we can smell, taste. Yes, exactly. It's it's you definitely know. a gift. I'm very thankful to have it. Yeah, I'm glad you said that because I am too. I mean, I actually would feel really weird if they weren't with me. Mm. And you know, and, and I've said it before on this show, we've um, had had times when when I was really sick and spirit wasn't with me is because they were trying to get me to heal instead of talk with them. But I felt like I was going to die. I thought I was done because nobody's around me. So uh, they must be waiting for me. So here I go, you know, but it wasn't, it was just that they said, it's time for you to heal yourself. Yeah, I agree. I also, we went to um, Ely, Minnesota and they have what they call the iron flats and you're still vibrating high and you're still connecting. Right. You're hearing less of the lower vibration that you hear also. Right. So it's weird to be really quiet. It's it's weird for it to be just toned down a little bit. It's, it doesn't seem right. I think if my head was at, it was quiet, it, it, I wouldn't be me. I know, right. That'd be strange. I mean, we, we go anywhere. We go to Walmart. You know, you someone's walking by and their grandma's right behind them. You hear them, smell them, you know, but see them, but... You know, you just don't walk up to somebody and say, "Hey, your grandma's with you." All right, so we got a we got a comments from Barbara, and it's quite long. So get get close to your screen so you can read this, and I'll read this out loud for everybody. I don't see. Oh, there it is. Okay. It does. I've always felt my mother's spirit around me. The past few weeks, I felt like I am inside her spirit. She's protecting me while I'm going through my healing process. Is this possible, or just crazy feeling I have? I should say that 11 years ago, she went through the same thing that I am. But, but not as severe. No, because what you're feeling is her love around you. It's almost like cocooning you so that you can keep your energy there and you can heal. Right. Yeah, but I agree. I don't think that's weird at all. I think that's amazing to have your mom there with you, trying to help you get through this type of thing. And I put I put out uh, I put out a call to Barbara to make sure she gets healthy because I'll be out in her area in Toledo. October 9th for a show. So she needs to come down. That's where we, Barbara and I first met. She came for a reading with me at that show. Um, so um, what is it, Paranormal Toledo or Toledo? It's something like that. It's an event. At a very awesome event. Great people. Jason Arthur and everybody um, are out there. So amazing. Need If you're in the Toledo area or in Ohio, come up and see us. That's going to be a great event. Oh, the other thing I, I, I forgot to, I to tell you, I just got booked today for um, DeadCon. So it's 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 one it's going to be in Fort Wayne, Indiana. It's on the 15th and 16th and 17th of October. Yeah, October. And um, Ernie Hudson is going to be there. Ooh, I know. But you've so, met him before. I know. I've already met him. I already got my pictures with him. But uh, I'll go back and talk to him again. And then... Um, but, you gotta but have not, the ectomobile there, right, right? But the real ectomobile is coming. Well, so Ecto One and Ecto Twenty Two will be there. So the whole franchise will have ectomobiles. Yep. But yeah, but then they have all kinds of horror guys there, um, you know, from all the films like Jason and Freddy and all that type of stuff. And then they have all those paranormal guys, and then they also have the spiritual guys there too. So that's in in October. So a lot of cool stuff coming up. You know, I love that stuff. 
I I'm yeah, Lake Erie fan. Paranormal. Thank you, thank you, Barbara. I love all that stuff. I'm a huge Freddy fan. I've collected like all the different items, and yeah, I like all the creepy, creepy stuff like that. That's funny. I don't. That's the one really? thing. I mean, yeah. Then my my two best friends, Scott Tepperman and Jim O'Rear, they make horror films. The, their new new horror film is is an hour and a half long, and they got like hundred deaths in the first couple minutes. You know, it's just slasher side but they love that stuff and i'm like okay but it just gets me i think it's i mean I, it doesn't bother me you know because i mean that's a human you know kind of zombie type person whatever but uh yeah, yeah i love it i love that stuff like freddy jason since i, I watched all, i watched all of those too i went to see my first 3d movie ever was um friday the 13th 3d well, I went with my with my parents for that. You know, it was yeah. pretty cool. Um, and they got the pole that came out and went right into your face. Yeah, we uh, we seen it at the drive-in, so yeah, it was pretty oh, cool. cool. Um, but uh, like when I met Spanguli, that was huge for me. Oh yeah, yeah. Because we I watched like, Spanguli too. Watch him. That was funny because we we got Spanguli to sign a rubber chicken for Terry's mom. Cause she loves it. She watches him every week, and so we give her her own, her own, um, her own chicken. Yeah, her own chicken. Okay, we got another question from Kimberly. Really? Here's a question. I brought my granddaughter a, a divining rod. When she opened the package, there was other things in there, items to communicate with spirits, perhaps. Anyway, I ended up throwing it out after she left. The bag of garbage was out right outside the garage door. The next few days, my dog and I heard loud mean growl one time only. The next day, the garbage was picked up and it was all more and no more growls. I hope it's gone. Any thoughts? Um, really, the thoughts on that? Um, she would have had, I mean, you get energy on things, but at the same time, if she didn't use those things, um, the growl, I'm going to say, is probably just a coincidence. That's what I'm hearing. Um, and they're gone. If it's yeah. something you didn't, you know, if you've something you felt that was bad and you already got rid of it, I don't feel like it's still there. I don't think the growl, I think the growl was just a coincidence. I don't feel any attachment there. I don't hear anything that there's an attachment there. Yeah, I didn't either because you're not searching for the growl. Mm -mm. Jeez, house is crazy today. I don't know why it's going on. Now there was like a, a, a fly or a bug that they let in when they came in the house. I'm like, what is going on in here tonight? <laughs> That's me. But no, but, no me. But, but let's look at the growl too, just as a growl. Because not necessarily, how do we know what that growl was without context or without searching? You know, that was a big thing. Is, is when you look at this, a growl could mean somebody with a trach that's talking. And they, and they talk like this, you know, it, it comes as a growl. Um, but that's what I said. So I understand that it sounded like that, but without knowing what it is, I'm, I'm glad it's gone and it is gone and there's no residual there because it wasn't like you guys took that and, and did any. Remember, everything that's out there, um, dowsing rods, um, EMF recorders, um, ovaluses, any, any of those paranormal devices they use on TV, those are all divining tools those are for people to use to talk to now that now divining tool is also a tarot deck you know an oracle deck same thing it's all our intent so whoever the user of those devices are it's your intent on it that you could bring in negative energies but if you're coming in for the highest and best good nothing's there and just because you and your, your granddaughter would never have done anything to be of lower energy, then that I don't think there was anything there. So I know that it's gone, and uh, and I agree with Sandy. Hopefully that all does. All right. Oh, it came from in the house. Kimberly says. Oh, the you know, came from yeah, in the house. yeah, but you know, and she also said it, she played with it for a bit, and that's okay. But it's not in the intent, because your granddaughter didn't sit down and go. Oh, who's the evil that I could get around her? Or how do I get anything strange around me? That's not the case. She was just playing it, trying to talk to spirits. And that's what we all do with it. 
Yeah. I mean, that's what we do with our oracle cards. That's what we do with, with divining rods. That was what we do with pendulums. That's what we do with our rocks. Yep. I mean, all that's, the, that's the thing, like, too, with that kind of stuff, you know, like, with it just being out there for the general public to buy, I wish they would put some kind of information on that, you know, right. I mean, or learn how to protect yourself before you do use some of those things, you know, bubble up, do the different things, you know, ask for the divine light to be with you and keep you protected. Why don't you, why don't you explain bubble up? Sure. So I'm big on teaching the bubble to kids. So around us, we have energy. Everything is created with energy. And, you know, when you walk past somebody and they just feel like, oh, you don't want to be by them. That's like if then they're having a bad day, their energy is off. So what I teach kids to do is imagine your belly button actually being the wand that you blow bubbles out of and blowing a big bubble all big enough, keep blowing it, blowing it big enough till it engulfs your whole body. And then again, we talk about intent because our intent is what kind of push starts or it's what we, what our intent is actually what we intend to have done. So I always put my intent out is that all positive energy in my bubble, no negative allowed in my bubble. You will always have negative around because how do we know what good and bad is if we don't have something negative? Um, but at the same time, it kind of holds my energy. It keeps me from feeling those other energies or those other kind of uh, someone's agitated, it affecting me. It keeps me protected. So when I'm using my tools, I always have my bubble up because I want to keep it for the highest and best good. And I want to protect myself from those lower vibrations that are out there because they are out there. Right. You know, the, the thing I do is I always have people in my classes, everyone I teach, it's about being in a shower and having the white light come over just like the water would and protect you. Um, just like same thing, putting a bubble around you. Um, but very, very simple. But the protection has to be put on every day and it also has to be reinforced when you're feeling other people's energies. To me, I don't believe... Um, uh, energy is, is either good or bad, and, and when we don't meet somebody, that's just the polarity that's different, and we're not supposed to be with them. And there are people in this world we're not supposed to be with. Mm -hmm. So their energy is wrong, you know, or different. But I don't want you to feel like, like you're causing any problems, because that's not the case either. You know, our energy is meant for our, ourselves, and then the other people then will connect with us. And if they don't, fine, then move on. Right. I just use my bubble. It's in my mind. It's my little protection just to keep my myself clear and clean, you know, and when I do the shower, that's a good way to do it too. Just to put, yes. the, you know, to put it on. I also use the shower to cleanse. So to wipe all that, like from a, a hard day, you have a really hard day and you just feel like your energy is just blah. I will literally take a shower and imagine all that yuck just washing away. Yep. And, and that's what it is. I mean, in my students, I teach them to do that at night. So the morning shower is you putting your protection on for the day. Your evening shower is taking all the unwanted crap that you picked up. Yep. You know, and I, when I say unwanted crap, that's anybody's energy. You know, a lot of times we talk about energy. Um, even if you're having a bad day and somebody makes you happy, that's bad energy. Because you're not of your energy. You always have to be just of your energy. And the more you can stay of that, the better you are and the better your day is going to be. But we still pick up stuff. We still pick up stuff from these. We still pick up, you know, all that, that negative stuff. Or uh, not negative, but unwanted stuff. Unwanted. That, yeah. And, and, the, and the more we can be of our own energy, the happier we're going to be, the easier we're going to sleep, the better we're going to feel, um, the more energized we're going to be through the day. But the more, you know, the more you've got, you have to be of yourself. Yep. Well, the other thing we talked about too, Scotty, was like releasing other people's energy when we feel yeah. like we have it. You know, yes, as, yes, very as much. Readers, as readers, our energy mingles with the with the sitter. We we yep. mingle, and I, in my head, sing the song "I'm a Little Teapot," and I dump that energy out. I physically see myself 
pouring that energy out. Because if you don't pour that energy out after every reading, by the time the end of the day, you're going to be dragging. And when I do a show, and you've been there many times, by the end of the day, I'm usually still going. Me too. I'm I'm more psyched when I, by the end of the day than like walking in the door sometimes. Right. Oh, well, I am too. I mean, yeah. And, and you know the connections there more. I, I'm a little different. I, I love playing golf. So I always take all their energy, put it in the golf ball, grab out my wood, and then I hit it out of here. Psh! Or, or I actually, I, I actually try to chip it back to them because it's their energy, and I don't want their energy to go away. Yeah. If they're still around, if not, I will send it back to them because they need their energy. I don't need their energy. Right. I just pour it out because you know sometimes that energy. I almost sometimes feel like a filter. Like I've filtered some of their. Yeah, that's so good. Hope, when when people leave my table after having a reading, I'm hoping they feel better. You know, I, that's what I, I'm, I feel like I healed them and usually they do. So what I feel like I'm doing is filtering it for them, almost like a carbon filter for water. I'm filtering that energy and I, I just ground myself and I, I put my roots all the way into the ground and I just let that go. That's so awesome. that they can walk away feeling much better. Yeah. So if anyone else has any questions for us this evening or comments or has something they want us to help them with, Please feel free to just type it in, and um, Sandy and I will see it, and we'll bring it up on the screen. So very, very cool. Yes. So I'll be in Marshfield, Wisconsin this weekend. Oh, you'll be up my way. Saturday, my son graduates, so I will be oh. uh, in Fredonia. So, hi, Laura. So Laura has a question. How about sending that negative energy out into the abyss? No. Yeah, mean, but I, I want them to have it back. Yes, because, and, I, and I'd rather filter it and get rid of it. Yeah, because I'm giving it back to people. I don't want I don't want any residual stuff. It's kind of like a party. If you come with your, your bad bottle of booze, I'm not leaving it in my house. I'm giving it back to you. You know, get out of here. Yeah, it's, and for me... I think for me, because I know I was supposed to be doing Reiki this whole time, um, I think that's why I filter it out and get rid of it, because that is what Reiki is. Yeah. You know, Reiki is pulling all that out, healing. Um, and I've always said that's what I felt like I'm supposed to be doing with my readings is healing. So I pull it out and get rid of it and hope they feel so much better. Right. Thank so you, Nancy. So I'm excited. Yeah, that's gonna be good for him. So, yes, definitely. Cool. Well, I'm too tall to for the screen. Is your show Saturday or Sunday? Saturday. Okay. Yeah, I won't be around on your way back down home. Yeah, otherwise I would have stopped in. Got to go to the Beaver. Have a burger. <laughs> maybe. Maybe you know. must call me. Maybe I will. I might be. I'm not sure. I'll let you know what time I get out of town. Yeah, because we can go have a, you know, go have a burger. So Sandy works at a bar called the Beaver. Yeah, the Thirsty Beaver in yeah. Westfield. It's and it's great. Burgers. It's got great burgers, it especially does. with bacon on it. It's good. I know. Well, yeah, their bacon is good. And then they got me back there, so that could be, you know, huh, on a day. And I don't know. I've never had. I've never had you cook a burger at the at the Beaver for me. So. <laughs> yeah, that's because I just started. I do good. I enjoy it. It's a lot of fun. Sometimes, sometimes it's a little busy, but it's a good thing. Busy's good. Yeah, busy's always good. And it's nice that everything's starting to get back to normal. So, yes, I'm glad that everything is good, and we're getting there. Yeah, I'm ready to be back. I want. I mean, I know life will never be a hundred percent back to normal, but I'm. And, I'm and it doesn't. And it doesn't need to be because we were doing things wrong. Yes, this will be the new normal, and it. And and I, I hope. Just put it out there that people will see the difference and feel the difference now. <laughs> what are you giggling? <laughs> Linda puts, someone named a bar after a common dilemma. The thirsty yes. beer. <laughs> yes. Uh, thirsty for beer, hungry for beaver. I was trying to think of their motto. Yeah. There you go. It's not the only, I mean, there's another one, but it's owned by somebody else. There's another one, I think, in like Beaver Dam or something, but I've never been there. Yes. 
Well, you would think you would think it'd be for damn they would have one. Yes. Yeah, I guess you're right. That would be a good place for one. Beaver Dam. Beaver Dam. Or that damn beaver, whichever. Yeah. <laughs> that would be a good name for one there. That damn beaver? Yeah. Good work. Good work. So Scotty, does have you talked about the school that you want to put together? No, I really haven't. So you should tell people about what you want to do because you yeah. teach. Like people ask me, how do I open this up? How do I develop it? And I always send them your way because mine was there. I never had to develop it. So I don't know how to tell someone to develop it. I can tell you how I, how I use mine, right. but I can't teach them. So I send them your way. Well, thank you. Yeah, I'm, I, I, it's a funny type of thing, but I've always wanted, ever since I've seen Harry Potter, to create our own Hogwarts, but not for wizards, but for psychic mediums. And um, I said psychics tonight. We're trying to put it together. With throughout our organization, so we have different teachers, different classes. Um, but down the road, we want a place where people can go and, and come and learn and take classes and develop, and, you know. And then, you know, like you and and Dawn, and because Dawn's opening her group up in Stevens Point too, a psychic center group. Um, it'd be nice to have her as a teacher. We have, a, you know, we have a couple shamans now. We have some people that know Reiki really well. And we wanted to have them in so you have a place to go. Because a lot of people don't have you know, people in their towns. Not every town has a shaman. Not every town has Reiki, you know. A lot of them do, but not everybody does. But we want you to go to one place where you can get some quality education and understanding, you know, and, and growth for you to get your own gifts. It's not about the school and it's not about me. It's about you. That's what I tell everybody that comes to classes for. I never want anyone to read like me because you can't because everybody's got to read like themselves. So let's work on the way to get you in touch with spirit and get you in touch with them and allow them to be there. And that's, that's the biggest thing. But I also want, you know, quality teachers, a lot of places people say things and, and they're way off on, out onto left field. And you always go, where the heck, you know, I don't believe that. That doesn't, that, my biggest thing, if it doesn't make sense, then it doesn't make sense. Yep. I agree. Well, I mean, you know, and there's a lot of different things to this. And I have a lot of people are like, oh, well, should I go get a reading from somebody else? And I'm like, yeah, I I mean, I think people should get readings from every from different people because I may bring your aunt and somebody else may bring your cousin and you might get grandpa. Everybody connects differently and everybody reads differently. Yeah. So, yes, Linda, I agree with you 100%. I am very selective on who I mentor one on one. I, I usually have to talk to you for a while and understand you, and and know what your true beliefs are, because I I don't want somebody that's going to be in this just to play, or make parlor games, or or try to make light of this. That's not what I'm looking for. And then I I want to look to make sure that you have the skill so that when we work through this, because it's not about taking your money from me. That's not what it is. It's about me developing you. And if we can get you even, you know, I, I've worked with people that, that have DID, which is you know, multiple personalities. That's what they call it now. And, I, and I, I've been working with them to work with each one of their personalities. So there's a lot of things we can do even with this without even getting you there. But I have to know you one-on-one. -on -one, and that's very true. And it just makes our, my, our relationship because once we start working together, once we, once we start working together, it, it's, you become – part of my family and I want to make sure that I have the best family around. It's kind of like, it's kind of like drag. It's kind of like drag world where they, you know, they're all families and they, they try to help and mentor each other. That's the same thing here too. Hopefully that answers the questions. Okay. Laura says, Scotty, I, I have one question for you. Why send bad energy back to the person? Um, no judgment. Just curious. Um, it's not okay. It's not bad energy. That's what I'm saying. I don't believe in bad energy. I just believe in different energy. So just like a magnet has positive and negative on it, and if you want to call it just negative, and that's the only term they have for it. But that, that other side's energy is no different than the other side. But when you and your polarity is right, you click. But when I turn myself off or I hide from energy or it's not my energy and I don't feel right with it in my readings, then I don't click with it. I bounce away. 
and and that's and a lot of times if I turn myself off, then I get the negative stuff clicking to me. So that's where the difference is is the fact it's not bad energy. So I I give them their energy back, and that's why I send it back to them. It's not it's not I don't. So the word bad is in my vocabulary is not there. It's just not meant for me. And any energy, I mean, even from Sandy, if I take Sandy's energy in wrong, even though it's the most amazing energy in the world, I love her hugs, but I can't take her energy because it's not meant for me. It's meant for Sandy. You know, and, and that's the thing we do. Even in Reiki, we take the energy through us and then we either clean it, sense it, and then give it back to the, either the universe, but then the universe is going to give it back to that person anyway. So that's the type of thing. So does that make sense, Laura? Well, I think she answered before I did, so I want to make sure that makes sense. I should, yeah, I, I, she should get that. Yeah, she, I know, I think she will. It's just different. It is It is different energy, but that is, it's just like, like Scotty, we've said this before. Even when we're reading, I've read for somebody who didn't want to hear what I had to say. I take them to you and they're like, you say the same thing and exactly. they won't listen. You know, okay. it's just that they didn't want to hear it from me. You know, or our energy wasn't vibing. And so. Okay. So Laura, ask another question of what you didn't understand on that. Because I'm not a person that I would say, like, for example, let's use you, Laura. You know, so we'll use your energy. If you came to me and you gave me a part of your energy, I'm not keeping your energy for that day. I, I I release it. I get it back. I send it back to you because that's your energy and you have to be of that energy. I said, but I can't take your energy because then it's going to screw me up. I mean, even that ghost hunting. I mean, I go to one place in Evansville, Indiana. It's the Wilder Library. There's a little boy spirit that just loves me. One time I went and I didn't protect myself. I didn't put my bubble on. And he, he likes to jump and give me a hug. And I did. And the moment he did, he came right into me. And I, and I immediately threw up because his energy, and he was all sad and stuff. And, he, and I go, no, it was my fault because I didn't protect myself. So I gave him back his energy, took it out of me. I cleaned up and we spent the rest of the night having fun together. But it's all about the fact that his energy wasn't bad, but his energy is bad for me. Right. His energy is good for him, bad for me. It's, you know, she's looking at it like sometimes people talk about like energy vampires too. They take yeah. the energy. Right. So when you give it back, it's like when you're reading, it's mixing. So to give it back so that you don't go like, like a battery, you're not going down. I didn't take it. You don't want it. You don't right. want theirs. You want yours and yours to be pure. And Correct. you want to give it back to them. Yeah, because because I'm not doing in more sessions. I'm not doing laying on of hands or healing or Reiki healing. I'm not doing that. So I'm not cleaning their energy in the reading. I'm giving them a reading. I'm talking to the dead people around them. And if they wanted to come back for a thing, I could take their energy and just give it back and then we can clean it. But that's for them. And that's got to say that if their energy is off, they might be of that energy all the time. They might be a, a negative, more lower energy type of person. And then that person has to live with that their whole life. That's their choice. Yeah. And and that too. So like lower energy, lower vibrations. I may vibe here. You're vibing here. We're not going to meet. So if I held your energy, that's going to take me back kind of down here. I don't, I don't want to come down here. I want to be here. Although when I'm reading, if I need to, I can take mine so that I can vibe with you. But I'm right. going back to where I was. Because that's where I'm supposed to be. Right. So give I'll give, I'm going to get back to Arlene's statement here. But she goes, Laura says, I'm thinking if they were coming for healing. Okay, I get it. Yeah, I'm not talking about healings. I'm talking about readings. Yep. Yeah, that's completely different. If they're coming from healing, we're going to clean it. We're going to heal them. We're going to send the positive energy from spirit. But still, I'm not giving mine. You know, I'm letting spirit come through me and clean, just like they do and Reiki and laying on pans, everyone, every type of healing. And that's the other thing we're talking about. We've had some really dear friends who are healers who has either had very, very bad sicknesses lately or have died. And and I think my belief is 
that people aren't releasing that energy from the cells quicker. And we're keeping other people's energy, which is bad for us, into us. And Arlene says here, she goes, makes sense. You seem to be saying if you're not compatible, it will not be mutually beneficial and no one progresses. Exactly. Good way to put it. Thanks, Arlene. You need to come with me on my tours. So you can, you can explain me better to people. <laughs> yep. Yeah. And, 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 I, and I, I knew, Laura, I was just saying it wrong or we were just we're off a little bit because I, I, I know you knew the energy. So I'm not saying anything bad. It's just I, I probably, the way I feel today, I, you know, I'm not as clear as I should be. And, and you know, Scotty, honestly, I do give people energy because sometimes I have so much that I do give it. Like You're, you're a little bit different. I don't. I can't. I don't have that much to support where I am in life. You know what I mean? Yep. I mean, yeah, I, we're, how many times we're, do I come up and hug you and, I, and you're like, I need it. I'm like, hug me. Here yeah. we are. Yeah, but but you are understanding that you are. But a lot of times people give it and take it when they don't have enough yes. or they don't understand they need it. Or, you, you know, it's just you have to be in the right place to heal. And you have the right place to give. Yep. You know, I mean, I have given in my life too, but I, right now, what way I am, I, I cannot give. I have to be of my own energy. Yes. Yep. But I like giving you extra. I like giving you, know, you a zap of me. I love it. I'm zapping you. <laughs> I'm zapping you. Zip, zip, no, I zap. Do. I do. And, and I mean, there's been times somebody's really feeling down and I will send them a bubble. You know, yeah. I will send, yeah, but, send them a bubble. Yeah, but you know, most of it, Sandy. I'm just going to say is you're taking, you're having spirit give you extra energy, and so you're not depleting yourself because to have yourself depleted by the end of the day wouldn't be great either. No, no, no. Yeah. But I do a lot. I do a lot with the universe. I do a lot with the universe. Oh, he says unintentional energy zombies. Yes, exactly. Yes. Yep, exactly. exactly. But but when we work with spirit and we let them help us with the energy. Then we're not giving all of ours, but we're, we're using our intent to use spirit's energy to help us. Yep. Mm -hmm. Great questions, everybody. Thank you so much. It's been wonderful. Yes, I love that. Interaction and questions. So how do we how do we have someone who is always negative and complains to be more and <laughs> complains to be more? Yeah, exactly. This was a good one. So how do we help someone who is always negative and complains? To be more positive of a person. So for me, my favorite Real thing point. is I challenge them because they need to find the negative. There, I mean, find the positive in the day. There is tons of positive things, but when they're in the negative, they're not seeing them. So I challenge them to find one thing for a week every day that's good. Then after that week, I make them two. Find me two, and when it gets easier, find me three. And eventually it changes the way they're thinking because they're not looking for the bad anymore because it's easy to dwell on, oh man, this happened to me because it's my luck. And if I didn't have bad luck, I'd have no luck. No, that's not true. You're just not seeing it properly. Yeah, and then she goes, everyone complains or events, but this girl is always so negative. Okay. So, so where I'm going to go on this for you is first of all, I, I take from the spiritualist faith that we make our own happiness or we make our own unhappiness. And so in essence, she's craving her hell on earth by always living in the negative and the being of that energy. That also is the fact that she has low self-esteem um, because she's trying to reach out and try to get people to work with her, to talk with her, to heal her. To, so she's always the center of attention when she's negative. But to me, what I, how I always do it, I always talk to them and say, remember, every negative situation is a learning. So if you take a negative, then you're just making your own help. Because everything, no matter what it is, is, you know, if somebody dies, you know, people take that negative and they'll hurt them for years. But to me, they're in heaven. They're the greatest things on the face of the earth. They're in the best place ever. I love them for it, you know, and I bless them for being there. So see, when you look at things different, you know, if you get a divorce, you know, how many times have you fought over the last, you know, two, three, five, ten years? You know, now you don't want to fight anymore because you're not with that energy. So there's always positive in everything we do. We can either take the negative and be the showboat and be the center of attention for people, or we can heal. 
And and so I would just come out and tell her flat out, and that's why people don't like me as much because I, as a reader, I'm I'm so direct, and uh, and I always tell them before I say, "Here it comes, they're going to slap you up," and here it comes. Ready? It's your fault. It is her fault because she's the one that's accepting that or wanting to be in that place instead of being the healing person that can go around and then help others. Thank you. I appreciate your, your compliments on that. And Laura, you too. Thank you. But it is. I mean, that's where the, the hardest problem in this world. And that's why I always say just love. And once we love, then every situation that we get into is based off of our love. What is it teaching me? The universe is always teaching us, but we always take it the wrong way. And, and the other point is, and I always want to say this too, the other thing that's really upsetting is that there's too many, and we were talking about this at the beginning of the show, there's only really two reasons why you get mad at somebody. Only two. Okay, ready for them? Here they come. One is we're mad at something they did that we didn't want them to, or they didn't do something we wanted them to do. So that's our false expectations on somebody else. That's why we get mad. Because we can't really we can't really do anything for anybody else. We can show them the way, but we can't do anything for them. And if we get mad, it's our fault because of our expectations. Because you should just know that they're, you know, that they might not change. And then we do too often, we spend too much time um, getting upset about it. So once again, our fault. Most of the stuff that happens to us or the reason why we get mad at others is our fault. Because there's really only those two reasons. And if you just love that person and let them be the person and let them do what they want. I mean, we're talking about transgender before. Sandy's kitty cat's all over the place. He's in trouble right now. <laughs> and it's because he does. I don't want him to do what he's doing. You got that right. Right, right. And then, I mean, if you look at LGBTQ, it's our expectation on them. Not They want to be themselves. Let them be themselves. Yep. Let everybody be themselves. And then unconditionally love them and help them when they need to. If they're hungry, that's not that's not them. That's not a false expectation. They're hungry. Give them food. You know, if, if they're getting picked on, save them. You know, those are the stuff. That's how we can help people. But too often, you know, but too often the person we're trying to help is living in that false expectations and, and living in that victimhood. And, and that's hard to get out of. And that's what I talk about lower vibrational energy. So if we talk about that in life, because once you accept that, then you live in that and you stay in that realm. Yep. And I, and I like to challenge them to find the good because once they start finding those good things that happen, they start thinking different. Yeah. Thank you very much. I appreciate that too. Cause I don't sugarcoat. And I usually tell people before I sit down and write reading, I go, you know, I'm a direct reader, right? I'm very direct. And if that's not the case then, but I know you're here for a reason. So sit down and let's go. All right, so we got um, Arlene says, is it possible their spirit guides are teaching them through negative issues? No, because spirit guides are, are of heaven, so they're only of love, and they're spirits. That's why they're called spirit guides. If they're ghost guides, yeah, maybe they could be. Or, or they could be working with ghosts, you know. So, yes, but I, not a spirit guide. A spirit guide is here only to give us love and only be there to support us through our decisions, our decisions, because because you know we have free will, we have to make those decisions. So they're they're not teaching them negative. A ghost could because they're not crossed over, but a spirit will never do that, right, Sandy? You agree? Yep. And spirit will never lie to you. Right. Spirit will never lie, and that's the other thing that I teach all the time is is people always say, "How do I know the message is right? If it's truly a spirit, then their message is always right. Just give it the way they gave it to you, and you'll never be wrong." It's when you interpret it or when you put your spin on it, then. Eh. Like you say, that first thought, not the second thought. The second thought is you. That first thought is spirit. Laura says, let baby do what she wants to do, Sandy. <laughs> I agree. Mo's climbing. Mo's climbing. No. Mo's too big to try and climb on what he's climbing on. Yes, he says, I agree. My parents taught me to like everyone for who they are until they give me. Yes, exactly. Perfect. Yeah. You know, and, and that's the same thing in the spirit world. It's the same thing everywhere, you know, because even most ghosts don't want to be where they are. 
There's a reason why they're angry. There's a reason why they're stuck here on earth. There's a reason why they didn't take the light and cross over. Mm -hmm. But why? That's our job as, as spiritual people to help those ghosts find out and then get the right ideas and right messages. And sometimes it is to give that message to that sitter. And as we give that message, sometimes that was what they needed and they can go. Great, great question, Laura. Are ghosts negative? No, but they can be. Because now remember, a ghost is exactly the same as a human, which is terrible because humans, some humans can be nasty. Some can be of, of love and light and like Sandy and I and of you, Laura. But some, some, they have the same privilege to do anything they wanted in Earth as a ghost. So can they hide your keys? Can they, for real reasons, you know, can they, you know, spirit does that too. But spirit does that to save you. You know, can they, can they make you feel upset? Can they give you upset stomachs? Can they scare you? Yes, all that ghosts can. Spirits can't. So, so yes. Ghosts are negative at times, but yet they're positive at times. Too. This is yeah. who's causing trouble. I know. So it goes, my mother is very negative at everything and is love, hate with me. And I'm the only person left in the entire family left that will help her. How long do you think I should try to get her to be positive? Hi, Scotty. We met in Blatt. Yes, we did. Very nice to meet you again. I'm so glad you came because here, here's your answer. Very quickly, um, how long do you think I should try? None, never again, because you because you're never going to change her. She's not going to change. So your effort at that, and, and and you can't change it. We can't change it anymore. You've already done enough for her. So now just let her be what it is, and just love her for the person she is, and just let her live the rest of her life the way she wants to. And it might not go well with you, then then that might be where you step back. So, what? That's free will. Yeah, it's it free is. Free will to be that. And, and Do you think any different than me, back. Sandy? No, no, because I, I feel like she's given her all the positive points and what to look at and, and how to look at things. And she's tried to give her the reason and the lesson. And it's not being seen that way. You can lead, just like the old saying, you can lead a horse to water. You can't make them drink. Right. So don't waste your time and your life on something that, that's not going to work. So be be that loving person to others that will accept your love and, and, and your understanding. And that's going to be, that's that's exactly what you need to do. But, well, you know, I'm unfortunately. I'm not saying don't love her, though. I'm not, I'm not saying no, don't love No, her. we always I'm love her. As much love as you can. I said love her unconditionally. Yes. That I means you have that. to that. Yeah, that means you have to love her for exactly who she is, even though it doesn't match what you want in life. Mm -hmm. Just the way it is. Because I love people that way too. You know, I mean I love people no matter what they do to me. I mean, I've been bullied my whole life. I'm gonna be bullied more coming up. You see this but, chunky monkey? I've been bullied all my life, but yeah. I still love me because I'm a good kid. I love me, but I love the others too. And I love everyone for the, that's the best they know right now. And with my love and what I can show them and what I can do is going to help them in the long run because they know it's not going to freaking take. All right. So next question. We go down to Arlene again. Someone told me once the way you tell the difference, if you're surprised by the answer, but the, but the answer is dead on. It's probably not coming from you. True to a degree. It's true. To me, it's always the first thing that comes to you is spirit. Anything after that, you're making up or you're trying to embellish it more. And and I always teach this because I was taught by a spiritual teacher, Ned. And the first time I got, I got a message from her dad. Um, and we all know her dad died. And she said, okay, Scotty, my dad died. Give me something different that we've never heard in class. I said, okay. And so I saw him give her a teddy bear. And I, then I said, Valentine's Day. And she goes, nope, now you're making stuff up. She used a swear word, but I'm not on the show. But but and she, says, she, she says to me now today, I don't remember me swearing. I said, you did. But it was probably her dad. But, you know, but the Valentine's Day made no sense. 
She goes, if you just said teddy bear, that wouldn't have made sense. I said, she goes, because every day, my dad, who hasn't been there in a long time, was a truck driver. And every time he came home from long trips, he'd bring me a teddy bear. And he says he hasn't been in the class for a long time. So the teddy bear was spot on. That was the best reading ever. Thank you. But you went further than you should have. And so that's why I just say what I get now. No matter how it sounds, I don't try. That's why we don't sugarcoat. I just give it. Well, I, but I can see what she means by surprise because the one day spirit, I mean, in the back of my head, my, my TV was showing me a big ice cream, you know, a big ice cream cone. And I'm like, okay, I'm seeing a big ice cream cone and I know this is for you, but it's really strange to see a big ice cream cone. And she goes, makes total sense. It makes sense for your sitter. So I could see her being surprised by something and it's usually dead on. Yes. Yes. But yep. you just got to give what you first get. Yep. Exactly. So then Laura says, so ghosts are looking just for someone to give them peace to cross over. Not all. Not all. Some, some, some have been here for 250, 300 years. I met a little girl who's 8 to 12 years old that's been here almost 300 years. She was, she was murdered, and she's here, wants to tell the story, but won't. And we're trying to do a documentary, but I think she's playing with everybody now. But she's been here for 300 years on this earth as a ghost, and she won't cross over. So, but most people, I even talked to her about it. I told her about it. I've given all, all the links, and she still chose to stay here as a ghost. I don't like that, but that's her choice. So, yes, a lot of them are. A lot of them don't. A lot of, a lot of ghosts don't even know they're dead. You know, it, it happened too quick. So is there a majority? Yes, a majority want to cross back over. Should all of them cross over? Yes, everyone should cross over. But are they going to necessarily? No. But that's why we have all these haunted houses. That's why we go to, you know, that's why we go to Philadelphia and, and back from from when this country was created. There are ghosts from there, period, still here. There are ghosts from Gettysburg. There are a few ghosts from 9-11. You know, they, they stay because they're mad, they're pissed off, they, they have stuff. They're not finished. And that's why it stops them from crossing over. They're not finished in some ways. I've met some rich people. I've met some serial killers that don't want to cross over. I've met some prisoners. You, I mean, I met a ton of spirits that don't want to cross because they're afraid to be judged. I agree. So... Hopefully that answers. If not, type in again. Sandy, what are best crystals to meditate, especially to bring yourself closer to the spirit? So I like you. There are many. Um, clear quartz, as we know, is the major healer. Um, I like clear quartz because it does have a variety of um, modalities to it. But if depending on what you want, if you're wanting to touch more with the angelic realm, I would use angel light that brings you into that angelic realm it depends on what you're wanting to meditate for if you're meditating i know some of my people know that uh, like i like soda light for anxiety so if you're meditating to pull peace for the anxiety i would use soda light somebody else might use rhodonite um if you're feeling like you have some like just i'm saying negative but just kind of some icky energy and you want to meditate to get rid of that Black tourmaline. Black tourmaline grounds you. So it really depends on what you're grounding for. But closer to spirit, um, even um, amethyst. Amethyst helps open the third eye. So amethyst would be something I would hold or maybe sit in a circle with some amethyst, make a grid around you. So Laura says, angel light or celeste light? Angel light. Okay. I would use angel light. That's for the angelic realm. Okay. Awesome. All right. Susan has a good question, too. She goes, can we have one of our spirit guides talk to another person's spirit guide in the other, in the ethers to help them with something when someone is negative? Yes, and also positive. Because trust me, my spirit guide, Steve, goes to everyone that, that, that I get to know or that I teach. All my, all my students have had Steve come, my spirit guide, come to them. I had one student who was not doing her work. All of a sudden, got a visit from Steve and goes, hey, you haven't talked to Scotty in a while. <laughs> What's up? 
And she goes, oh, yeah, I forgot. He goes, I, I wouldn't do that if I was you. And, and he goes, but, yes, our spirit guides work with each other. And we're allowed, and they want to, they want to work with us. Just like, you know, just like our loved one spirits that are on the other side with us. They want to work with us. That's why they're all here. We're all working together to help others to heal, to help others to live their best lives. So, yes, definitely, Susan. Our spirit guides can definitely do that. Sandy, you, you I, agree? I totally agree. A hundred percent. They're there for all of us. They're not just there for us. They know who we need to help. They know who we're helping. So they're going to help on their end. They're yeah. an extension of us or we're an extension of them. Sandy's seen Steve already too. Steve is a, Steve is a hot Greek guy. I'm just telling you. I know. He was my, he, I was, I was his wife in a previous life. And yes, he's very hot. <laughs> very hot. Still is. I'm very excited to have him. Yes, very sexy <laughs> voice too. Yes, he's amazing. Yes, he is. So, there's, yeah, that's a good way to write. So, Laura says she does her guys through automatic writing. Great. Okay. That is so really we, neat. I don't do automatic writing, but it's really sometimes um, different when I'm getting ready to go to a show. I will get messages that I have to write down and I bring to a show. Greg is actually one of those that received one of those messages that yeah. I was sleeping. I was woke up, told, get a pen, start writing. And that's what I did. That's, that's the, there's two different ways to do it. So like Sandy did, that's one. The other one is to take a pen in your hand, piece of paper, put it down and let it go. And let's spirit right away. I have a, I have a short story from Steve that he did that way where I don't, I, he didn't send anything to my brain. He just took my hand and went, so uh, the words are a little harder to see, but it's fun when that comes through. But they're there. The spellings are right, everything he does. So, but yeah, that's the two different versions of automatic writing. One is you hear and you write because they want you to do that. The other one is they they don't want you to hear and they write for you. So, two different I've ways. I've never done that one. I've never done the automatic where they write for you, but I do have to go. Hold on, I can't write that fast. You see, know what I'm like, it's like a mess, but I can read it. Steve likes the ladies, Susan. He'll, he'll, you just said it. He said, I'll, I'll be there. <laughs> oh, so Lord does both automatic writing. It's great. That's awesome. Okay. Dreams are very vivid. Yeah. That's what I can, that's what I call my dream work because I know when I'm sleeping, I'm, I'm working on the other side. Yeah, this is a good question. I'm glad you brought it up, Arlene. Are spirit guides assigned to multiple people or only one-on-one? -on -one? Well, yes and no. <laughs> There's a lot of those answers today. Well, we all have one spirit guide that has been with us before we were born. We sign our we sign our contract with them, and they decide that they were there. We talked. Steve and I talked about this before I came to this life. That we were together in last life together and he still loves me so much even though i was going to try to be a man this time which i'm never going to do again just telling everybody next time when you next next life when you see me i'm, I'm a girl enough said anyway I, I love both sides yeah i don't I, i'm going to be a girl i've only been a girl like three times ever all my life so i i, I don't know I, and this time i tried to be as manly as possible playing football and everything like that yeah you're still beautiful to me. But anyway, thank you. Anyway, so Steve and I made that contract in the beginning. So Steve will come in into my life and has been there since I I was just egg and sperm. Steve jumps in at that time to watch me. He's been there ever since. And he will be here all the way until I take my last human breath and my soul departs again. So, yes, we all have one spirit guy. That's that. But we do get other spirit guides that, that come in and out of people's lives. And, and it's not, and it's not the one spirit guy. So Steve couldn't be somebody else's, even though he wants to, and he'll go visit. But he, but he's not your guy, you know, and he'll not be there the whole time because his his duty is to me and your one spirit guy. But we get many guides in. I've I've gotten I've gotten Buddhist monks that have come in to me. I've got you know I've gotten women. I've gotten men. I've gotten everything I need. I get my guides in here to help me. So you do get more. Agree. I agree. I'm sitting here nodding. Yep, 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 yep. Okay. Just I want to make sure. 
Because if not, please, you know, feel free. No, no, no. I totally agree. I mean, I've even, when I smell roses, I know Mother Mary is with me. Um, there is a lot of different things that come through and, and um, a lot of different ones that you just need that help from them at that point, you know, but your one main is with you all the time. Yeah. Okay. So how do you find out your spirit's guide name, gender? I want to be able to feel a connection. Awesome. And then, and then I think, uh, Nancy has the same thing. Just ask. How do you know your spirit guide? You ask, yeah, exactly. Uh, but the best way I, I I teach it, I teach how you find your you know your guides through my classes. But the other way through is meditation and asking. I mean, we all have the feelings. We all have. If you want your guides around you, I know you already feel spirit and you already have them with you. So you need to just feel them behind you, just like when you go to the mall and you're walking and you're looking straight forward. Who's walking behind you? Is it a male or female? You know male energy, you know female energy. Right there, you know the difference. Or if you feel somebody in your house and all of a sudden, is it a male energy or is it female energy? Then you know. And then you ask them to say, hi, are you my guide, main guide? And they'll say yes or no. And then they'll, then you'll say, hey, so uh, I'm I'm Scotty, you are. And he, and my first time I heard him, he said, Steve. I said, great. Um, but... You know, for me, it took a while, too, and I understand it. It's, it's a tough thing to get, but I, Steve's been with me forever, and I haven't talked to Steve. I've only been talking to Steve, what, 20 years, 15, 20 years, something like that. It's only been a portion of my life, not my whole life, because I just wasn't ready for it. You have to be ready for it, too, in, in your beliefs and understanding. But but I got mad at Steve one time, and I never will do that again. He, um, I told him, I said, I said, I don't believe you, you effing blah, 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 you know, nothing's, you know, I've never seen you do anything, you know, is this really my voice or is this your voice, you know? I said, I've never seen you do nothing. All of a sudden, my bathroom door goes, whap, and shuts. Then I hear, I hear him whispering in my ear, he goes, don't you ever effing make me do that again. And I never have. And now I make sure. But I, I want everybody to understand that they don't make this, don't let somebody else give you this connection because a lot of people, a lot of psychic mediums want to give you this. I'm like, why? It's the most, I, I call it romantic, but it's the most wonderful experience in your life. This is a person that knows you more than even yourself. This person knows everything you've ever done. This person everything knows. Everything you've ever thought. Everything. Right. Every, every little kink, every everything that makes you, you, they know. And they're okay with it because they're with you. So this is even, you're even closer with, with your spirit guy than you are with your, your spouse or your partner. You know, it doesn't matter. This person's there. And for me and, and Steve, I, I cannot live, I could not live this life without him. You know, and I thank him every day for it. So that's why I'm so, don't ask people for readings to tell me. Because some people try to tell you. And, and they come to my booth and goes, this person said I had this. I go, I don't know, do you? That's all I ever say because... Sometimes you're right, sometimes you're wrong, but I want you to feel it. You need to have that connection. You would yeah. do anything different? No. And when they ask me who's my spirit guide, it's like I could tell who's there now, but that that's your intimate question. Who's your spirit guide? That's your intimate question. It is. You know? It is. And it's and your intimate relationship. Like, yeah. And then they want to know, well, then how are you really who you are? That's not what this is about. That's not how this goes. Right. You want to talk to grandma? I'm right here. This is what we're right. going to do. But your spirit guide is your voice. It's your friend. Right. And I can see them, but that's for you and him, you and her, oh, not so. us. Arlene, another, thank you guys so much. I'm just, uh, we're going long tonight just because there's so many awesome questions. This is fun. So thank you, everybody. Arlene's got another one for us here. And, and Sandy, you can give yours too. Do you channel in your readings or relate what you hear? Great question. When I, when I first started, when I first started in my life, I related what I heard, you know, and my readings were a lot slower. So like people now, they go, oh, I want an hour reading. I go, yeah, I can charge you that, but we'll be done in 35 minutes, you know, because I'm just going to be done quicker because I channel now. And, and that's why I get a lot of people in my readings tell me, oh, that sounds just like my grandma. Yeah, because it is your grandma, because I'm channeling her. I learned that after I took ayahuasca, that, that 
that helped me connect better with the spirit world because it got it took my ego away and so that's why now they just channel through me it's a lot easier so the readings are a lot faster the messages are more it's because they're just talking right through me sandy how do you do it i think it's a little bit of both for me because i hear but then i also can when I start totally feeling the person, you can feel them in you, but I don't allow them to jump in. Like I know you do. I don't like that. This is my space and I like it clean. So I don't allow anybody to jump in. So like a true channel, I don't do that, but I do, I do a lot of hearing, but I don't do a true channel where they jump in. You're not going to hear grandma's voice through my voice, but I hear grandma's voice because I'm pulling from her. So that message is coming directly from her. I can explain her voice. I can explain what she smelled like. Uh, I can explain what she cooked for you. It, and you do great at that. You do yeah, amazing. But I don't like them. I don't like them jumping in on me. This is my space. See, and that's where my and that's where my connection with Steve is so strong. If Steve was not there, I would never do it ever. But I also have, have Mother Ayahuasca with me too. And so if I don't have these strong spirits blocking. And allowing me to come back in, I would never try it. I mean, sometimes I, I trans channel and sometimes I, I channel. So it all depends. Sometimes, like when I ghost hunt, I go away. And I step out of my body and let the spirit there. I once had a little girl channel through me. And she, the first thing she said on the tape, and I laughed after I heard the tape. Because I, I always want it recorded because I, I don't know what I'm saying. So the little girl, which came in a very different voice because I got a kind of a deep voice. And her first thing that she says, she looks down and goes, what is that? <laughs> and pointed to my groin. And I'm like, oh, cute. Because now she's in a male body. She's like, what the hell is that? That's really cute. All right. So moving on. Does that answer it? We got one more. How was ayahuasca? Uh, amazing. But like everything we all said tonight, it was a yes or no. My first night was the worst night of my life. I went in kind of cocky, saying, oh, I'm a psychic medium. I'll be able to hear the spirits. I'll be okay. Wrong. It was terrible. They took everything away from me. They took time, space, um, knowledge, breathing. I, I didn't know anything. It was the worst night of my life. I had an out-of-body experience where the shaman came to my soul because I'm sitting there looking at my body on, in my bed. And, and the shaman's coming up to my soul and talking. I looked at the shaman and go, how the hell do you know I am here? He goes, well, he goes, Scotty, it's the same way you talk to spirits. I went, ah, <laughs> I got it. So the first night sucked. It was so bad. I almost didn't do the second night because it was a two-night affair. Um, but the second night, they taught me unconditional love. And that's why I talk about it so much. So that's why you see on my pages, you see on the video shows, you see all this type of stuff. You see us talking about unconditional love. And that's because they taught me the second night. So that's that's where it was. So if I didn't, if I had one or the other nights, I wouldn't have learned. But I'm glad I had both. And I'm the opposite, which is cool because this is where, to me, I've never done that, um, and I like to keep my connection pure. So right. we're just different that way, and and I don't think it's wrong for anybody. It's just not for me. Where right. I I don't even like I don't I don't smoke pot. I don't do anything. Because I don't feel pure. Right. To me, I like a very pure connection. And and I don't I don't see anything wrong with the way Sandy does. Yep. It's hey, all we different. We can agree to disagree. See how that works. I, but I don't disagree. It no, works I don't either. Me. See, that's <laughs> that's either. the difference here. That's why we were trying to describe tonight, Sandy and I. We don't disagree on either one of our, our beliefs or our, our way we work. We just work differently. And that's why I said earlier, I said, I tell all my students, they can't read like me. I don't want you to read like me. You have to read like yourself. Sandy reads like Sandy in the only way. And yes, you can see two different ways. But when we work together, it's amazing. Yeah. But we all work in our own ways. Yeah, the other thing is... Yeah, Barbara, I'm hearing that too. Barbara says she's hearing things through the. I know I'm hearing that all night, so I don't know where. And I don't have a spirit box running. <laughs> I keep hearing little crackling, but that's yeah. It. Me too. Yeah. I so. 
as he says, I want, I remember a dream I once had with my grandma said it perfectly. When it's your time to go, it's your time to go. It was, it was after someone passing. I think my aunt, her daughter, I don't think my grandmother knew English. It was so vivid. Yeah, that's amazing. But that's, but that's how she knew you could hear her and understand right. her. Okay, so I, so I got into the thing. Um, can you explain ayahuasca? Yes, ayahuasca is a, is a psychedelic drug um, based, um, it's made by, or it's, it says that it's a psychedelic drug by the U.S. government, but it's not. It's a, it's a, a Peruvian shaman's healing medicine. So the people of that faith take this medicine to understand and work with spirit. So it's a it's a medicine with the Peruvian or Peru, um, so, and they take the vines of two plants and put them together, and you drink it. That's what ayahuasca is, and but that's but it's a ceremonial thing. And we had I joined a Native American church, so I could do it in their style, you know, and do it the right way. And I'm glad I did. It was really amazing. Yeah, I think it's a pure shaman thing. Yes, it is a pure shaman thing. But more, but down there, everybody has shamans because Linda said that. Um, it, it is based on shamanism, and but they teach all their people in, in their society to be of that. And once again, it was like when we started the show talking about Mexico and how they do it. And this is just farther south, Peru. They all know the spirits are there to teach them. They all know it. That's why they take this medicine to help them heal. And I lost a lot of my ego. That weekend with through, through ayahuasca because I'm nowhere near as cocky as I was before. I understand that I'm not in control. Spirit is that everything they they do and they say I need to listen to because they're really controlling my life. So well, that's like I mean I've had people you know drinking and want me to read them and I won't. This is a good question. Arlene says, I, I'm not being critical. Don't care if you were. <laughs> if you have an opinion, please say it. But I've always told never to allow spirits other than your guy to channel through your body. I've, I've been away for a while, but I never understood harm in allowing your guy to act as your gatekeeper, so to speak. You are correct. That's exactly what it is. It is not harmful if you're protected. It's harmful if you go into it unprotected or if you go into it without the right intent. And then, like everything, it's nasty. Um, a lot of times you don't come back, you know, right away. You know, you could be stuck. You could have other crap happen. You can pick up stuff. But I I know I have a really dear friend here in Madison, Wisconsin. He, he full bodies channel a group of spirits that have never been to Earth. And and they're called, they call themselves Rama. You should come down and we should go at one time, Sandy. You'll love it. Um, but... But Rama is amazing. Anyway, Rama, Rama talks to us and teaches us. Rama's always told me, he always calls me the TV show, the TV show guy, because he goes, you're going to be the one that brings us to the masses. And I said, well, thank you. I, 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 I'm honored that you said that, you know, just in that for it. But it, it is, but he channels full body and he comes back fine. You know, so you can allow spirits to channel. And I allow a lot of spirits to channel. But it's, it's only because of my gatekeeper, Steve. And it's just not my preference. I've right. done it. I, I just don't like it. I, It's different. I do different. I read yeah. differently. And that's yeah. great. I don't like to astroplane. And I can astroplane at any given time. I don't like it. Right. So Laura says, I have a Peruvian blessed necklace. How should I use it? With honor and blessing, and and just to use it as as what is intended for is protection. So just use it to make sure that you're protected in everything you do. But it also means that you shouldn't do anything negative to others during while you're wearing this, because then you're not paying respect to the Peruvian people and spirits. So that's the thing we always forget is is we think we need to be blessed and all this stuff. So we bless ourselves, then we go out and, and call people names. Or we yell at people, or we then we're just disrespecting, so we're not doing any good, and we're going right back to where we were. So, you know, the, and Laura says it has a clear quartz 
um, point. You can definitely use that also too for a thousand. I mean, a pendulum. Mm -hmm. Help get answers that way through too. Yep. All right, so it is our time, and we've been going extra. Thank you guys so much for being here. Um, I'll be here. I'm here every Wednesday night at 7 p.m. Sandy's now going to get where you can get and find Sandy, and then go find go find her and get get a reading from her and and, and get some Reiki from her. Yes, you can find me at Facebook at uh, you can put in Sacred Sandy, and it will bring up Sacred Readings and Crafts by Sandy. You can go to my website at www.sacredreadingsandcraftsbysandy.com. You can find me at a Psychics Unite meeting because I put those out where I'm at. Um, you can find me at a show. Um, the next one I'm doing is in Ashland. Um, I'm, yeah, I'm trying to think. And then Chicago. So Chicago, I'm going to, can I put it out there, Scotty? What you I'm can, doing? please do. Are yeah. you ready for this? I'm ready. You know, are, is everybody else ready? Is for? everybody else ready? So. Um, Sandy is taking her re Reiki and her readings to the Exotica, which is the big con porn convention, um, in Chicago. So I'm going to be taking, um, healing. So sexual healing, sexual blockages. I will be doing a lot of that there. I'm excited. So that is July 16th to the 18th in Chicago and Rosemont at the Daniel Stevens Center. Big show. I'm excited about that. Um, and then, uh, yeah, you can find me somewhere around Scotty. So, yeah. I'm and so, yes, he says that, and then she says, go buy your crystals from Sandy. Yes, yeah, please, I do. Please. And I do my my crystals. When, when you get your crystals, they're blessed and ready to use. So you're not getting anything that has any kind of bad juju or negative or anything like that. And then go like my car's Facebook page. Yes. And at Ecto22, E C T O twenty two. Go do share it. Share it to my share it to my Facebook page. Yeah, I will. I just put it out before we came on the show tonight. So thank you guys all so much for being here. Um, I don't have a guest yet for next week, so we'll figure that out. But thank you for coming. Thank you for watching. Thank you for being here. Thank you for all the wonderful questions tonight. It was a wonderful night. So thank you all. Love you all. We will talk to you, you soon. Are. Have a good night.